Well, that first mile though, you know, that first mile, you're cold and it's terrible and everything is awful and then you warm up and everything's fine, but then you, that, that first layer, you start to sweat and you start to get wet. So what do you do then? Any, any options for people? Yeah, when you start to get into that spot, if it's if it's really cold and windy out and you do start sweating quite a bit, um, you probably want to, you know, hopefully get to a point where you can and maybe stop early even potentially and, and change out. Mm -hmm. Or, um, But I think where you want to get to is hopefully avoiding that by making sure that you're planning before you go out the door or right when you go out the door, kind of take a, a look. Some of the things, again, I, I've just learned over the years from people much more experienced and knowledgeable than me, but um, things that I have always heard, you know, kind of think of though as, as though you're dressing for, um, you know, a temperature that is maybe 10 degrees warmer, 15 degrees warmer than what you're actually running in. And that's a little bit of a ballpark. I don't actually look at the numbers that closely myself, uh, but I do pay very close attention when I walk out the door and first like feel the temperature when I'm outside um, of what I'm, how that feels to me with what I'm wearing. And I, I should be a little bit chilly. You should, you should feel a little bit chilly, um, almost shiver a little bit maybe is a good, you know, that, that's a sensation. Normally you would be uncomfortable going out to just stand on outside or walk in the park like that. But if you're going out for a run, you do want to have that feeling of, well, I'm not quite fully dressed for this weather right now. Uh, because within a half mile to a mile, you are going to warm up. Um, that's, I think, a key. The other piece, and that helps go a long way toward not sweating too much and then getting cold later in the run, potentially. Uh, the other big thing that I think a lot of folks have maybe heard, uh, but it's always worth reminding, is if you are running in the wind, and especially if you're running in like an out and back kind of condition, uh, always try to run into the wind first. So say you're just doing an out and back from your house or from your workplace. Okay. If the wind is um, strong in one direction, always start your run going into the wind so that when you are more sweaty, you're not getting the wind blasting you in the face uh, and can get chillier on the way the way back you have it at your back, essentially. That's that's a great idea. I wouldn't have thought about that. And one thing that I tell myself and the athletes that I coach is that, you know, that first warm up mile, do a loop around your house because then if you're warmed up, you can drop a layer because I'm a wimp. I don't I don't like running in the cold cold. Uh, I do it, but I don't like it. <laughs> and so I'll I'll overdress and then just drop a layer. So that's like my my little trick is to because I'm a total wimp when it comes to that, which is why I moved away <laughs> <laughs> from the cold, the cold as much as possible. So, OK, so we got our layers on. Um, what about what about the dark? I mean, especially you way up north that you guys don't get too much sunlight this time of year. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's always a little bit depressing, kind of the seasonal depressive, uh, depressing disorder, if, if you will. Um, the headlamps are, are huge. And if, uh, if you've never ran, worn a headlamp potentially, or uh, it's just a small little, obviously like flashlight type device that has a elastic strap on your head, they make them quite lightweight and easy to, to wear. And you can, you can get a basic one. Honestly, the ones I have are, are not fancy. You can certainly spend a hundred dollars on one and get one. That's really, if you're planning an ultra marathon and running through the night, you might want to invest a little more, but you can go to your local hardware store um, and buy a inexpensive one just to see how that works. So um, I wear headlamps uh, even this time of year and uh, a run right after work or a simple morning run. And it can do a little bit to certainly help illuminate where you're running. But obviously, more than anything, it also draws attention to you for cars or other people, bikes, that type of thing. It's, it's vitally important as well. Um, the other thing, uh, I actually spend uh, a lot of time in the winter doing lunch runs. And I'm fortunate uh -huh. to have a flexible job where I can typically, if I don't have something scheduled, I can do that. Not everyone has that ability or the ability to, to shower at work or wear, you know, wear running clothes uh, at their desk, I understand. But that is an option if someone uh, has that ability. Uh, maybe you don't normally run during the workday or during your the midpoint of the day, but it can be a great time to go out and run, sort of reset your day and set you up for a great afternoon. And that's a way to make sure that you're running in the daylight. 